all the women in the Red Sox front office quite as uh, effect efficiently and effectively as we, as we have today. So thank you, uh, thank you all for being here and coming out. This is uh, a very exciting day, although it's gray, cold, and snowy outside. Uh, it's hard to believe we are just 18 days away from pitchers and catchers reporting. Yes, thank you. So, although we, uh, we are here to, um, to recognize the historic significance of this venue, Fenway Park, and the Boston Red Sox, uh, today's announcement is, is a little bit different. Um, it's, uh, it's exciting as we enter the, 90, the year in which Fenway Park will turn 99 years old. Hard to believe. Uh, we approached the 100th anniversary of Fenway in 2012, uh, but in 2011, Fenway will turn 99 years old. And under the leadership of John Henry and Tom Warner and Larry Lucchino, we've prided ourselves on bringing some blue chip, world-class events to Fenway. And over the last 10 years of their stewardship of the club, we've been fortunate to have uh, many uh, Octobers filled with postseason baseball. And uh, I saw the trophy somewhere, two World Series championships. Um, we've been fortunate enough to have about 17 major concerts at Fenway, uh, featuring the likes of Bruce Springsteen, um, uh, Aerosmith, Rolling Stones, Paul McCartney, some real legends in the world of music. Uh, we've even had uh, outdoor ice hockey, uh, NHL's Winter Classic, and last year we even had an international uh, soccer match. And, and bringing these blue chip events to Fenway has been something that uh, has been important uh, to the Red Sox ownership. And this really would not be possible. We're fortunate enough to play in Fenway, but we know that, that Fenway is much more than a ballpark, and, and all of these events would not be possible without uh, a few people who we have to thank before we, uh, before we make this announcement. First of all, uh, Mayor Thomas Menino and his staff at the City of Boston, we're very grateful to you for, for making uh, all these events possible. Boston is a world-class city, and under your leadership, uh, we continue to be able to bring these great events to Fenway Park and to Boston. Uh, of course, our Fenway Park neighbors, uh, we are a part of this community and we recognize uh, that while bringing uh, concerts and hockey games and soccer matches and of course 81 baseball games a year is great for business, uh, we do have uh, a partnership with the neighbors and so we thank them for allowing us uh, to bring these events year in and year out. Of course, we have to thank uh, Red Sox ownership led by John, Tom and Larry uh, under their stewardship over the last nine years, uh, there's been a $285 million investment to preserve and protect Fenway uh, for the future generations of Red Sox fans, so we thank them. Of course, we thank our partners, our longstanding partners at Live Nation, uh, Don Law, Dave Marsden, and Doug Borg and their entire staff. Thank you guys for all your efforts and continuing to bring uh, the best uh, in musical talent to Fenway Park year in and year out. And a special thanks to the tireless efforts of uh, some Red Sox staff. Uh, there's too many people to thank, but I do need to point out three people uh, specifically. Uh, Larry Cancro and Beth Crudis from the Red Sox front office who work their, uh, their you-know-what's off to make these concerts happen every year. Uh, and the man who we give a heart attack to year in and year out, uh, Dave Meller, our head's groundskeeper, uh, for bringing uh, concerts in, the staging, and then he gets us ready for baseball when the acts move out. So thanks to all those folks for making, uh, making these events possible. Now on to the reason why we are all here today. Uh, as Susan mentioned, it is a very exciting announcement, a great day for us. Uh, for those of you who are from Boston and New England, you know that we had a very uh, busy off-season in terms of talent acquisition. Uh, Theo Epstein and his staff were busy uh, adding to our roster as we go for our third world championship since we've been here. Um, and I think with the additions of some guys like Carl Crawford and Adrian Gonzalez, bolstering the bullpen with guys like Bobby Jenks and Dan Wheeler and the return of Hideki Okajima were well positioned. But what I don't think uh, the world knows is that we not, we're not stopping with those additions to our roster. And for the first time in, in I think, baseball history, for one night, uh, the Red Sox are going to be the first team ever to actually have a 34-man roster instead of a 25-man roster. Uh, we today are proud to announce we're signing some new uh, players, as you can see. Uh, we're proud to uh, add them to our, our lineup. 
Um, and as you know, Theo and Ben and, and uh, their staff focus uh, tirelessly on statistics as they evaluate talent uh, and players to sign and add to the roster. So for the newest addition, for these, uh, for these uh, new nine players to our roster, I thought I'd give you uh, some of their uh, statistics just to give you a sense of some of their accomplishments. Uh, together, they've sold over 180 million records worldwide. Um, they've performed to sold out crowds, including three nights at Radio City Music Hall. They've raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for charity around the world. They sold out 765,000 tickets for their Millennium Tour, sold out within one hour. So ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Red Sox organization, uh, we are proud to announce that the Red Sox and Fenway Park are adding the new kids on the block and the Backstreet Boys to our 2011 roster. Backstreet Boy right oh, here. No. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> fan. What is that? What is it? Hey! That's cool. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hey this, we feel Take like it we away, should, guys. We, we wow. feel like we should be signing a contract and bashing the Yankees right now. Yeah. <laughs> just, That's right. Um, this is official. I don't want my friends or people to say, oh, that's cute. They signed you for a day. No. <laughs> We're officially, I'm officially a Red Sox today. That's, <laughs> it's going to be on my, uh, it's going to be my epitaph. But um, um, it's amazing. And, and, and I, I have a quick story to get out of the way. But uh, again, to drive that home is uh, in, 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 during the dark ages of the evil empire before 2004, it was 2003, and uh, I had just gotten married uh, in 2003. And uh, after that game seven in New York, I was in the fetal position like all of Red Sox Nation and uh, moaning. And my wife said, you're not on the team. You're not a Boston Red Sox. Well, honey, I'm a Boston Red Sox today. So thank you. It's official. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. Um, this that was lovely, Joe. Thank, Thank you. you. I Thank thought you were going to tell the Lou Gorman story, but we'll do that next. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a long story. Um, but sincerely, um, this is really, uh, we've been walking around downstairs just sort of overwhelmed. Um, this is uh, more than we could ever imagine um, growing up in the city being fans of all Boston teams, but like all Bostonians, you know, we grow up suffering and adoring the Red Sox and adoring this ballpark and the history and the tradition that it has. And um, the idea of watching a baseball game in it, uh, I think, sparks emotion in a lot of us. Um, the idea of walking through this amazing field and, and being here at any time is a wonderful experience. The thought of playing a concert here is, it's just, uh, it's, it's unbelievable. And um, we're very honored. We're so grateful that this opportunity is here for us. We're thankful to the Red Sox and to everybody that helped put it together. Um, Larry Lucchino, who we got to meet, we were all a little starstruck and giddy when we just saw him back there. Um, we're looking for Theo, but we couldn't find him. Uh, but it's just, it, it, this is beyond a dream come true. Um, and, you know, obviously we want to thank the city of Boston, thank our fans who 
are the ones in, in, in New York who are kind enough to let us move our concert date to, uh, to make this concert possible because they know how important this is for us. And, um, and also thank the Backstreet Boys um, who are in our teammates. You know, they're, they're, they're not Bostonians, but they're, they're Red Sox and, and they're our teammates and our brothers now. And, um, you know, throughout, throughout their history, a lot of people have said to us, well, you know, Backstreet Boys wouldn't be around if it wasn't new kids. And, you know, we, we, we scoff at that. You know, they'd be around um, if it wasn't for us. They, they work hard. They're incredibly talented. But if they ever did owe us one, <laughs> they paid it back. They paid it back because without them, you know, this concert wouldn't be possible. And, and, and this partnership has been so incredible. And, and we're just so grateful to these guys. And, um... You know, uh, it's just w this is this is the ultimate payback. You know, this is um, we're very fortunate that we get to share this with the five of us and all of our fans. But to share with the Backstreet Boys, who are the most incredible guys and their fans, is going to make it all the more special. And um, you know, we look forward to playing here and to having you know our fans welcome us, but also welcome those guys to to Boston. And I know their own fans will be here, but it's going to be. A very special night, so thanks to everyone. Well, it's definitely an honor as well for the Backstreet Boys to be joining the stage of the new Donnie. kids in the block. Appreciate that, man. <laughs> we know we couldn't be doing this without them, and uh, you know, just hearing from them growing up here and all the history that they've had with this place, and we know how it is from us, for the Backstreet Boys, from where we are, and it, the, the nostalgicness of playing in your hometown and in, in, in a historical field like this that's had so much history that I've even today gotten to know a lot about through them and. Even Brian schooled me a little bit on some of the Bostonian history here. But, um, but it's an honor, like I say, just for us as well. Um, just hearing the, the history of how this place has been since, I think it's 2003, with uh, the boss coming here and uh, hearing uh, just recently as well. Um, just all the, the acts that have played over the years, it's, it's, it's amazing. And it's definitely an honor for us. And we're very thankful for the new kids to allow us to join them on stage and to make this history for all of us. That's what's up. Just want to love you, Howie. Just want to add one, That's for you, one quick thing. <laughs> That's for you, Don. Um, just like Howie said, like everybody said, it's uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be here today. We want to thank the uh, Boston Red Sox front room staff and and all of their people. We want to thank Live Nation for putting this thing on. Um, and to baseball fans around the world, you might not be music fans, but I think every entertainer uh, has some sort of dream to be a professional athlete. A lot of entertainers that I know we want to be professional athletes. And a lot of the athletes that you meet, they want to be entertainers. So it's, it's funny how our worlds collide you know, all the time. But uh, growing up, like Howie said, I, was, uh, I played baseball for 13 years as a child. And I think little, every little boy in America uh, on a little league field somewhere dreams to play at this park. And um, little did we know that it would be a stage and a concert. But uh, we will be fulfilling many, many dreams. Um, I learned how to bat in the batter's box from a guy named Wade Boggs. And, uh, you know, he taught me how to stand in, the, in my stance. That was, that was my Wade Boggs stance. So uh, uh, history runs deep in, uh, with baseball in my family, and uh, it's a privilege and an honor to be standing here. But little did I know we'd be singing our way here. So we, uh, we made it. Mom, we made it. <laughs> Speaking of Wade Boggs, um, mm -hmm. uh, Wade Boggs invited me to batting practice in 1990, and I, I didn't go. Yeah, it was maybe the worst mistake of my life. <laughs> Almost as bad as the mistake he made signing with the Yankees. But <laughs> hopefully uh, we can we can make up for that and, and we can uh, come and uh, take a few swings maybe a, a, a day either side of the concert. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Joyce again. <laughs> Joyce. <laughs> All right, I'm Carson from Carson Kennedy on Mix 1041. Welcome to Boston, guys. Hey, man. Thank you. Uh, the question, I have two quick questions. One, who called who to put this together? And then who came up with the name N-K-O-T-B-S-B? Isn't that brilliant? O-M-G. <laughs> S-K-O-N. You finally got that. Well, the, the N-K-O-T-B was sort of our nickname. <laughs> And BSB was sort of theirs. Yeah. <laughs> and after a couple of drinks, so yeah, we combined them together. So, but the 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 clever part, 
Yeah. yeah, we decided to share one B. Yeah. That's where the real creativity From comes Boston. in. Boston. <laughs> you know, that's where we sit around and, you know, like, no, guys, let's make it one B. And, you know, that's and then we didn't know which B to drop. Right. <laughs> but we're not going to tell you which B it is in the middle. Right, right, right. Could be the B on the back street. Could be or the, was it know, the block so or was it yeah. the B yeah. on the back We right. promised Boston. we wouldn't tell anybody. There's two equal shares of the B, you know, the top but, and the bottom. But uh, in all seriousness, uh, the first time we got together was uh, at uh, Radio City Music Hall, and we did that last summer. The new kids were playing there for three shows, and it's an awesome arena. And we wanted to. We had a couple of guests, and we thought, like, how can we really top it? And luckily, um, the Backstreet Boys were in town, and we asked them to come by and sing a song. We we had an acoustic part in the show, and we started with "I Want It That Way," and then the curtain came up, and they were the Backstreet Boys, and um, our fans. Went nuts, you know, and, 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 you know, they go nuts for us a lot, so we know that, but we could tell that there was something different, you know, their reaction was something different, and it was just cool. I mean, both groups have kind of seen it all, so um, we're looking forward to, you know, making new experiences, and we knew that, wow, that was, that was a special reaction, and let's see if we can, you know, do this for real, and just from then, it just took off, I think. Exactly. The fans wanted it. Yeah. It was cool. Yeah. When, when you've done, sorry, when we, we've all done a lot of stuff, but, and we've seen a lot of fan reactions, but the, the fan reaction Joe spoke about at Radio City, I think was new for all of us. It was kind of, it was another level of, of reaction. And uh, when, when you can be surprised, or when you can surprise your fans after, you know, the amount of years we've all put in this business, then, then you kind of, you probably may have struck something good or bad, but hopefully, in this case, it was good, so. <laughs> Uh, Joyce, please. Yeah. Yeah. Joyce. <laughs> oh, Joyce. Hi, Joyce. Hey. Oh, Joyce. Whoa. Hello. Hey, come Whoa. on. Hello. Okay. Hola. Come on. Behave. Radio City was something. Just wait till you get the reaction here when you come yeah. to Fenway. That's going to be something. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you're all going to play when you get here to Fenway. But if you were to play at Fenway, what positions would you play on that field? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Honestly, oh, I'd, be the ba I, 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 I'd be the bat boy. I gotta be <laughs> honest. <laughs> Cause I'd quit while I'm ahead. I got no bat speed. Um, I, you know, I'd try to bunt the ball, but I'd probably get it off the eye. So I'm, I'm gonna just make sure the bats are nice and clean and, and ready to go for the guys. Yeah. I have to be the water boy, I guess, as well. Cause <laughs> Good. I'm so sports illiterate, I don't know where I'd be hitting the ball to. So I'd make us uh, lose the game, unfortunately. Just checking. If it was T-ball, I'd be shortstop. Yeah. But lefties, I'm a southpaw, so yeah. lefties don't play shortstop. You know, God bless me with a, with a left arm so uh, and legs to run like a deer, so I played – First base, because I'm not that tall, but as I got older and everybody kept growing and I stopped, they chucked me out in center field. So I would play center field, first base, and also pitched. Got a mean slider and curveball, if you were wondering. There you go. Okay. <laughs> I, I would be the go-between between, between Theo Epstein and, and Terry Francona. <clears throat> because I yell at them and tell them what to do all the time anyway on TV. So I would just do it in person. No, you're not going to sign him. You're going to sign him. Then make it work. We'll take... Yeah, okay. Jordan? <laughs> um, um, I'm also a lefty, so uh, I would want to play maybe shortstop, but I'd probably... Uh, I'd just settle for a uh, pitcher. Yeah. Mm. Great. When the yeah. game's on the line, I want Jordan on the mound. Yeah, baby. Really? Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> And Brian at the plate. <laughs> there we go. Other questions? <clears throat> Boston's so shy. You guys are so shy. Don't say anything. <laughs> you might upset them. <laughs> there he is. 30 years. 
Listen. 30 years. I don't know. I don't know what the bigger honor is. Playing Fenway or actually having Matt Siegel show up after 10 o'clock. All right. Anywhere. I feel honored. Dude, it's the first time I first time I worked out with you guys. That was two wives ago, man. <laughs> A lot of water under the bridge. Uh, we're running a webcast right now at kiss108.com, and that means that you're being watched all over the world. Hello, Rangoon. <laughs> They're watching. Now, for those of you who are watching uh, on your computer around the world, here in, we're in Boston at Fenway Park, and we're going to have yet another snowstorm. Yeah. Joseph, let it snow. A couple. Come on, baby. The weather outside is frightful. But Maddie Siegel is here and he'll keep us. It's so delightful. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. That was great. I think Thank it you, is Brian. after <laughs> 10. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me check again and again. <laughs> So uh, we want to thank Donnie, who, is, uh, who took the afternoon off from uh, shooting Blue Bloods down in yeah. New York City, and uh, with Tom Selleck. And dude, you played everywhere, right? You played Wembley in London, played Madison Square Garden, you played everywhere. Yeah. Fenway Park, that's got to be it, right? Yeah. OK. We're, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, what's the word, Joe? Oh, you get verklempt. Yeah, yes. Joe said it on the yeah. way down the street. <laughs> I'm down nervous. Palm Ave. Yeah. You're yeah. verklempt. Well, oh, Wahlberg yeah. is Jewish, isn't it? Yeah. Wahlberg, Wahlberg. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it could be. It could be. It could be. Well, you've been out in the field and stuff, but to perform here, that's got to be something. It's, uh, it's it, I think, how he was talking about seeing uh, Bruce here, and I came to see Aerosmith and Jay Giles last summer, and um, it was, on the one hand, you know, awe-inspiring, and on the other hand, inspiring. You know, it was inspiring to to imagine. And, and um, Joe Mack has sort of coined a phrase based on Barack Obama's book, uh, The Audacity of Hope. He, he likes to refer to this whole endeavor of ours as the audacity of pop music. Um, Leave it but to Joey to compare himself to Barack Obama. <laughs> well... <laughs> He's doing all right. He's hanging in there, though. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's it was it was inspiring, and uh, you know, it was it sort of dared us to dream a little bit, and uh, and here we are. I think it's awesome. Now you know you have to do Sweet Caroline. You know the deal. You know every eighth inning they do Sweet Caroline. Hey, we're in. You don't Sweet have. You can. Sweet Caroline. <laughs> Ba, ba, ba. We're good. Good times never felt so good. Uh, yeah, Come on, nice. Joe. You can do it. We'll wait, we'll wait, we'll okay. wait. Save it for the, save we'll it for the show. And that's Brian. We don't want to give it away. Just yeah. turn this thing around. <laughs> now, this is a homecoming, Brian, for the new kids, but you're from Kentucky, which makes you the only person I've ever known from Kentucky. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> we do exist. So I think, quid pro quo, you have to get the new kids to play at Churchill Downs next year. I think that's only fair. <laughs> you, know, you know, I have, to, I have to trump you on that one because, uh, like playing here at Fenway, we played two nights sold out at Rupp Arena in Lexington where I grew up. So this is kind of the, the monumental moment of what I remember as a basketball fan as well growing up in Lexington, Kentucky. So, you know, never in a million years did we dream of playing baseball parks. But... You know, if you're going to pick one, I choose this one. <laughs> Brian, let me ask you quickly. AJ is okay. We read in the papers that he's going through some stuff, but he's, he's good. He's good. He's, he's good. good. I just talked to him last night. He called me uh, from rehab. He's in rehab, and he's got one more week. He's been there three weeks, and he's doing very, very well. He sounded very excited to uh, to find Alex again. He's working on bettering himself so he can better all of us sitting up here. So it's good. Well, that's good for him. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> that's good news. Um, well, that's about it for us uh, from Boston. The big news today, the new kids on the block and the Backstreet Boys will be performing at Fenway Park. Um, we love you guys. Welcome back. Thank Thanks, you. Man. Thank you. Thank you. Want to stay. Yeah, yeah. Any more yeah. questions? Yeah. Just you, young lady. Exactly. Great. Going. Great. I think what we're going to do is we're going to thank these guys for their time. Um, they've got, really uh, I think, some flights to catch really. and some other things. For the media, 
um, a, a couple of instructions and a couple of, uh, of opportunities. We are going to have a photo opportunity for media down at the Green Monster um, to take a picture of, of, uh, of our performers of our newest Red Sox in front of the Green Monster. For all the cameras who would like to go down there, please meet Abby DeCicio at the bottom of the stairs. And then for everyone, please enjoy all the food and the refreshments that are here for everyone. And uh, we look forward to seeing y'all here for a fantastic concert. Food. Thank you. Hot dogs. Get your hot dogs, yeah. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Hot dogs. We'll see you Get June 11th.